Howdy from Kentucky. Uh, I'm Joel at Earth Tools and we're going to show a little video here on how to make your old BCS shift gears a little easier. This video is specific for the older model BCS machines 715, 725, 735 uh, also works on 737 and 605 and 602 and 604. This, this is actually a 602, but the selector is basically the same on all the tractors I just mentioned. And this procedure even works for the newer model tractors, the one with the little three-jaw PTO, which were produced after 1995. Uh, they have a zigzag selector pattern. The older BCS tractors had a, an inline selector pattern, so your gears were, you know, one, two, three, four, all in a line. So the problem was that uh, these things are very stiff to shift because, and it's because of the ball and spring detent system they use. There's a little, there's a little tube encapsulated in here uh, that has a, a spring in it and a, and a ball. And the ball pushes into a series of holes. My fingertip is going into a series of holes here that align with each gear shift and neutral position. And the, the spring is so stiff in these ball and spring systems that you have to put so much force on it to shift it that you usually overshoot it. The other problem is that the spring is so strong and pushes the ball so firmly into the holes that with the dirt that's typically present on a machine like this over the years of service, the ball actually wears into the holes. That is, it wears the holes deeper over the years. The ball itself doesn't wear, it's stainless steel, but the holes wear. And once that ball goes into those holes too far, it gets really hard to shift because when you try to move it, it would rather basically shear the ball in half then, uh, then shift gears. And the ball will not shear. What will happen is you'll split open this little tube that, the, that houses the ball and spring. This is the little tube that's welded into the gear shift lever. When you split open that tube, you have to change this whole gear shift lever, which means a transmission teardown and about $100 for this gear shift lever. You don't want to do that. So here's a trick uh, that will allow you to, wait, wait, I'm doing this wrong. Uh, to make your tractor easier to shift. And I used to do this on brand new BCS machines and it made them shift a lot easier. So the first thing you do is drive out this little roll pin that's through the gear shift selector. The gear shift selector kind of bounces a little bit so you have to just hit it harder to compensate for that. There it goes. The roll pin doesn't actually hold anything in. It's just there as a little pointer so you can see what gear you're in. Pretty useless and actually you can just throw the thing away because if you can't tell what gear this thing is in, you probably need, you know, your eyes examined. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take down, we're going to take off, I mean, these two bolts that hold this quadrant piece on. We're calling this piece the quadrant. It's the thing with the with the sticker on it. Come out. Now this this is actually a nut and a stud. It's supposed to be taking the nut off of the stud, but this whole stud is backing out. That's not really a problem. We can still get it apart. I'm just, it's going to pretend it's a bolt today, so we'll just deal with it. There it comes. Now, I should also mention that this procedure is specific to tractors with this ball and spring system in them. The really old uh, BCS 715, 25s, and 35s had a little different selector. Uh, they had a notched deal where you kind of twisted the gear shift and, and made it go from notch to notch. There was no ball and spring present in that one. So this is only applicable to ones with the ball and spring in it. Get this thing to shift back. Look off this one. This one's coming out like it's supposed to. That is, the nut is coming off the top of the stud and the stud is staying in the transmission. So yay for that. Oh, off. Now we carefully pull this up. I'm going to pull the quadrant up to release the ball. And I'm kind of keeping my fingers back here because I don't want the ball to get away. There it is. There's the ball. Stainless steel thing. Set that there. And then we've got to get this spring out of here. A little punch I had here is usually a good thing to fish down in here and get that spring out. And that's not going to do it today. It doesn't look like. Let me get this thing to slide down here. Maybe I can get an angle on it. Yep, there we go. So there's the spring. A very stiff little spring. So I'm going to cut this spring down. Now if I cut it too much, it's going to be a problem because it won't have enough spring force to actually hold it in gear. 
So I'm going to take off not quite one full coil. We're going to take off about 3 16 of an inch of length. I mean, there's a coil at the bottom. It's kind of flattened out. I'll take off that coil and just a little extra. So basically, in, full, in total length, I'm taking off, like I say, about 3 16 of an inch. Uh, I'm going to cut this away from the camera because it's going to fly. Okay. There it is. If you take off too much, you need a new spring. They're about two bucks. Uh, the new ones are too long too, so you have to shorten the new ones. Now, very important, the, the one end of this is still the factory flat end. One end is now jagged because I cut it off. You want to put the cut end away from the ball. You want the good end of the spring up against the ball. So I'm going to put the cut end of the spring into the barrel first so that the good end is facing the ball. Put the little spring ball back in there. This thing spun around on me, so I'm going to have to reorient it this way. Notice on the 602, the numbers are backwards on this thing. Normally on a 715 or 725 or 735, the, the gear shift numbers would be facing this way. But the 602 is one of the few BCS tractors that the handlebars are permanently mounted in the mowing position, so the decal is backwards. So there this goes that get this thing back together. Now there is a little bit of movement in the gear shift on these things. That is the holes that these uh, that pass through the studs here on the bottom are not round, they're actually slightly ovalized front to back. They're, they're little slots. And that's to allow you a little bit of movement forward and back on that gear shift selector so you can get the gear shift selector aligned correctly with the inside of the transmission. And I'll demonstrate how to do that in a minute because once you have this quadrant off, you're going to want to, you, you have to reset it basically. The factory usually set them the first time. At the, at, during assembly and you know now that we've taken it off we've kind of messed up the factory adjustment. Let's run back down in here. Okay so what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the center neutral position. Since the tractor's not running it's still a little difficult to shift. There we go. Center neutral position right there. And we simply roll the tractor back and forth just slightly and listen if there's any noise. It rolls freely. I don't hear any gear grinding noise. Like a gear. That means we're in neutral. We're in true neutral. Now, if it had a grindy noise, like you can hear gears shaving against one another, then the selector needs to move one direction or the other. And you just move it one direction, roll it again. If it does it worse, move it the other direction. You find the place where it makes the least noise and rolls with the re least resistance in the center neutral position and tighten it down. Done. Sometimes we have to do this on brand new tractors because sometimes the factory doesn't do it right. So we'll cinch this down. These are 13 millimeter, by the way. And now, shifting this takes virtually no effort way easier, half the effort, but it still has enough tension to actually hold in gear. Do it yourself. Thanks for watching.